Now, my name is uh, Moravi Wanjao. For those of you who don't know me, I'm known as uh, Pastor M uh, by many. And I have the privilege today of bringing God's word to you with a friend of mine, um, a companion, my girlfriend, uh, my main hustle, and my side hustle. I don't have any other hustle, <laughs> and I don't ever intend to have one. We've been married for 22 years. She's a clinic. She's trained as a psychologist as well. So please put your hands together for Pastor Carol. Uh, it's so great to be preaching with you. Yeah. Good morning, Mavuno. As you heard, my name is uh, Carol Wanjao. I'm one of the pastors here at Babuna Church. I'm really excited to be bringing God's word to you this June. We are really, really excited to be doing that. Yeah. And would like to say a special welcome to our visitors who have come uh, to join us in June. We'll be preaching through this month on how to stay in love. Absolutely. I, I hope we're still in love. We're so in love, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're so in love. I was waiting for you to say I'm your main hustle and your oh, side yeah. hustle and all those other things. <laughs> But it's okay, I know, I know. So, so we're going to be talking about love. Let me just ask a question. How many of you have ever fallen in love? Show of hands. Seriously, I mean, we're in church. It's okay, just be honest. If your neighbor's hand is not up, just look at them and say, Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, that's such a bad thing. You know, it's, it's, it's so easy to fall in love. It's so easy to be fall in love. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to fall in love, isn't it? You don't have to be rich or poor. Rich, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're educated, whether you're illiterate, anybody can fall in love. In fact, the most amazing thing about falling in love, it's so easy to fall in love that many of us here, most of us here, if we are honest, would admit to the fact that we have once fallen in love, had a crush on someone we've never even met. Whoa. <laughs> I think here we're talking about a TV actor, or it could be a famous musician, mm -hmm. or it could even be a presenter on TV. And you know, you've had this amazing crush on them, even though you have not met them. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. So Mavuna, stop looking so spiritual. Um, your neighbor might be a visitor. Tell them, relax. Just tell them, relax. This is Mavuna Church. We are real here. Are you why, aren't you, why aren't you telling them? You're a visitor also. Tell them you, you can, we can be real here. So we want to, here, here's the thing. We were actually having this conversation with my wife earlier, and I, we had a moment of disclosure. And we shared with each other people that we've had a crush on that we never met. Would you like to know who? <laughs> of course you would. Of course you would. So I'm going to tell you mine, and it's going to tell you how old I am immediately when I say that. But you know, mine was Janet Jackson. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. Seriously, I mean, I had a poster of her in my dorm room, eh? And I used to look at her and just say, wow, 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 this chick just needs me in her life, for real. Uh, but <laughs> okay, what, how about you? Okay, let me just say... Uh, no, 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 no disclaimer, okay, no just disclaimer. say. Just no say. judging! Okay, don't judge her, no please. Judging. We don't judge you, we promise. Okay, mine was uh, Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie! Yeah. I mean, the what? man can sing! You're stuck on the Lionel man, Richie, that's yes. so sad. Stuck I know, I know his songs. Wow. Now, now, Mavuno, you've had a great time laughing at us. Some of you, I know you are friends, you're laughing with us, amen? So this is your opportunity for disclosure as well. Now that you've laughed, it's time for you to share. So turn to your neighbor, introduce yourself, tell them somebody that you had a crush on. It could be even in primary school or high school that you had never met. Come on, let's do this. Tell them, stop looking so spiritual, let me tell you mine and you tell me yours. Wow. How come you guys were looking so saved a minute ago? I mean, people actually have, they actually have something to yeah, share. Yeah, it would be difficult to get these guys back. Oh my goodness. Wow, okay, okay we're not supposed to share a name. Just one. That's it. Just one. Funny, how long is your list? <laughs> That's amazing. That is so amazing. Let me just see, I mean, because I know this generation, I know that some of you guys, uh, we've been talking. So, how many people had this name shared? Someone like Justin Timberlake. Anybody say Justin Timberlake? Justin Timberlake. Idris Elba. Idris. Uh -huh. Idris. Uh -huh. I'm, 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 seeing, I'm seeing some people saying. Okay. 
I don't understand that one. I have to say, I just don't get that one. Uh, Beyonce, anybody say Beyonce? I know the guys are trying to play it cool right yeah, now, like I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> George Clooney, anybody say George Clooney? You know, okay, a few people say George Clooney. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. Okay, I see any, a couple. Any what were the men talking about? <laughs> I'll tell you, men have issues, eh? I think so. They're trying to pretend that they're That's, so spiritual. Yeah, You're more yeah. spiritual than your pastor, anyway. Let me say this. Falling in love doesn't require rocket science. Anyone can do it. And today it's extremely easy. You know, they say on March 1st of 2013, there were 2,500 online dating sites in America alone, uh, with 1,000 opening every year and 8,000 across the world. Online dating, where you just put your profile up, hook up with somebody that you've never ever met. Social media today makes it possible to connect with people that you've never seen. You're liking people and you're poking people and you're, you're doing other things to people that you've never met them. And so today, it's easier to fall in love than any other time in history. Yeah, that's so true. And you know what? Unlike our parents who are probably restricted to the places, you know, to live where they were born or yeah. near, near where they were born, for us today, we have so many opportunities for work and for travel. We, you know, we can, these opportunities are available locally and abroad. And with these opportunities, these, you know, we have so many opportunities to actually fall in love with whoever and whomever, anywhere we go. It's never been easier to it's fall in love. It's never been easier. But you know, we also argue that it's never been harder to stay in love. I mean, people today are disillusioned. Young people today are disillusioned by this thing called staying in love. And many people, actually, the younger generation, you speak to them, many of them don't believe marriage works. They believe that this thing is a myth, and when they see a couple who say they're happily married, they think they're pretending. Because they think this thing actually doesn't work. They haven't seen anything to tell them yeah. that it works. Yeah. So staying in love has never been harder. And today, in fact, the rate of divorce is so high. I mean, with young couples, today, we, we, we hear of young couples in their 20s getting divorces. Yeah, that's true. And in fact, in this country, one out of four, one out of four of every marriage will end in divorce one. by their twentieth anniversary. So, if you're in a row, just count one, two, three, four. You know, one, the two, first three, person. Pew. Yeah, one, two, three, one, two, four. Three, yeah, they will. That's end. how bad that's, it is. That's how bad it is. And you know, the worst thing is, Kenya has the lowest rate of divorce in East Africa. So we're saying that this is a horrible. It's a horrible thing happening across our whole region. Uh, divorce is a mess. It's harder. It's never been harder to stay in love. Yep. So now, Carol, you're a psychologist. Yes. And maybe you, I guess you're also a, a bit of a psychologist, you, a sociologist. You love to study trends. Yeah, what I are some that. of the things that make it so difficult for people to stay in love today? Okay. That plus a married. Anyway. Plus a married, yes. <laughs> I think there are three reasons that I can, you know, just quickly think of, uh, of why it is that it's so difficult, you know, to stay in love. And one of them is our experience. Yeah. You know, uh, the truth is that very few people today are around healthy, romantic marriages. In fact, I dare say that in this congregation, there are people here who don't know what that looks like. And it's because, you know, we've seen marriages or the models of marriages in front of us have been abusive. Yeah. You know, uh, they have, uh, there's been abandonment in those marriages where one spouse walks away. Or, you know, a marriage where people are just tolerating each other for the sake of the children. And so, unknown to us, when we are in that kind of environment, we pick these values yeah. of those marriages. We pick those values, we pick those belief systems. And, and, and when, we, you know, when we have this, what we might not realize is that these beliefs and these values make it impossible for us to stay in love. Wow, what are yeah. some of those beliefs or values that people have? Okay, okay, now here's a common one, okay? Do unto others before they do unto you. Do we, do we know that one? Do some of us live by, do we know people who live by that one? Do unto others. It's a person who will say, I will dump before I am dumped. <laughs> and you find that those people have, uh, you know, uh, commitment phobias. Okay, here's another one. Uh, do unto others as they deserve to be done unto. See, they deserve. Yeah? Do unto them because they deserve to be done unto. Or there's another one. Do unto others depending on how they make you feel. Anyone feel that one? So if somebody makes you feel good, you do unto them a good deed. If they make you feel bad, you do to them a, a bad deed. And then there's the last one. Do unto others until you wear them down to get to do it your way. 
<laughs> you know, we're laughing, but we've seen this in marriages, haven't we? And basically what we're saying is we come into marriage with these unwritten rules. That's right. Uh, these unwritten values that we've brought in from our background. Yeah. 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 And you know what? Uh, that is so true. So a lot of us, you know, will do our vows and we'll say for better, for worse, till death, has, till death do us part. But in reality, what we mean is that till trouble do us part or till death, uh, death do yeah. us part yeah. or till feelings do us part. And the thing is that we want something so deeply, something so deeply, and yet we have no idea how it looks like. Because our experience does not give it us does not help any us. picture. So yeah. number one, it's common experience. problem is experience. What's yes. another one? Okay, the second one um, has to do with our hunger. We have a deep hunger within us. Uh, so, do you know what uh, sociologists say it takes for a child to grow up, you know, to be fully equipped yeah. uh, to engage in a healthy relationship for life? So, a child yeah. to enter a healthy relationship, be in a good marriage. In a good marriage. So, what does it take? This is what it takes. Yeah. In fact, they say it's very simple. All it <laughs> takes is for a child to grow up in a home where they get respect, where they get encouragement, where they get comfort, where they get security, support, acceptance, approval, appreciation, attention, affection. Does this sound like the home you grew up in? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. I mean, seriously, that sounds very intimidating. Yeah? So what yeah. you're saying, what it takes to have a good chance at staying in love, if you're going to have a great chance of staying in love for the rest of your life, all you need is respect, encouragement, comfort, security, all those things. Yeah. Nobody's ever abandoned you. You have no abandonment issues. Yeah. You have no commitment issues. Yeah. Perfect home. Yeah. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. And you know, here, listen to this. Um, even if this is a very slim chance that you, know, you get raised up in this kind of a home, yeah. then you will need to find somebody who comes from a similar background, a similar package as yourself in order to have a successful marriage. So even then they have security, security, uh, comfort, uh, uh, affection, attention, appreciation. Happily ever after. Yes, yes, that package. Full That's package. depressing. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so basically you're saying the chances of just naturally living happily ever after just like that yeah. are slim to none basically. Yeah, they're slim. They're slim to none. And in fact, to complicate matters uh, further, there's a very disturbing statistic. And that is 60% of Kenyan women are likely to be single moms by the time they are 45 years. 60%. 60%. And what this basically means is that in this country this year, there are a large, a huge number of children who are going to be born to mothers in single homes uh, where the father is, you know, just not present or where there's no uh, stable male figure. Now, we're not saying that, you know, a single mom does not have, you know, the ability to raise up a child well. In fact, there are many single women who are working so hard just to raise their children. Yeah. But if we're to believe what the sociologists say, if we believe that you need that kind of a package, then you, it actually may, really needs a, a man and a woman to be, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a healthy marriage so, to provide so, that so, kind so of environment. what you're saying is it's already hard, it's already hard for hard. everybody. Yeah. But these are just some of the things that make it harder for most people. Yeah. Uh, we're making it even, it, it's just even harder. Yes. We don't have what it takes on the we, inside what, it, for what we need. Yeah, we actually yeah. don't have what it takes. And you see, for, for, for us, we come into adulthood and even into marriage or any relationship, looking for someone from whom we can get these things, you know, uh, the things that we are missing. So yes, we will fall in love with someone. Yeah. In fact, we fall in love, you, uh, you know, we look at somebody, we love the way they look, we love their voice, we love their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I loved your eyes. I, know. <laughs> I loved her toes. <laughs> he loved my toes. I know, toes. that's weird. I think for me, if I just noticed toes. It's just weird. I know, I know. stop I know. judging me because you've got your own issues. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but now when we are in love, the, the thing that happens is that we begin wait, to wonder... She has wonder. nice toes, by the way. <laughs> For real. Anyway, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. Me. <laughs> All right, let's focus, focus. 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 Okay, so now when, once we are in love, the quick question becomes is, will you give me respect? Yeah. Will you give me that encouragement, that comfort, that security, that support, that you know, appreciation, you know, just that package that we had talked about. And so it no longer becomes, are you looking good? Or do you have a nice voice? It is, 
Uh, what value add are you adding to my life? Exactly. Yeah. So at that point, it doesn't matter whether you married Idris Elba. No, it doesn't. Or Jennifer oh. Lopez. It doesn't yeah. matter. All I know, Richie. Because what you really want is something they can't give you. Yes, exactly. And and so what we're saying is that, you know, we, we've been mal- malnourished for love and, you know, that affection and all that stuff. And when we enter then into relationship, each of us are trying to squeeze it out of the other person. You know, we're squeezing it out. And all of a sudden, the things that initially attracted us to each other, the things that, you know, gave that... Uh, buzz that or that e- yeah. magic, that emotional, you know, that chemistry. Those things that gave that chemistry, no, you know, fade into significance because we are no longer getting what we really want. Oh my goodness, you're busting our bubble here. So number one is experience. It yes. makes it very hard for us to stay in love. Number two is the hunger we all come into relationship yeah, we all with. have hunger. What's number three? Number three is our culture. Now what I mean by our culture is that our culture has a very low threshold of pain relationally okay now we're able to withstand a lot of pain when it comes to our career you know the people who are studying at night working late hours you know we can withstand that pain for our career but when it comes to our relationships we don't have we you know somehow we we're not able to 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 withstand we don't have that um threshold to money yeah that's stamina and so what that means is that when things are not working we just step out i mean gone are the days when people said i do yeah and they meant I do whether I feel it or I don't, and whether you feel it or I, and you don't, yeah. we will do this thing yeah. till death do us part. Yeah. One of those days. In fact, that is ancient history. In our culture, the single most message that we receive on a daily basis is if you're not happy in your relationship, it probably means that you have the wrong person. It, probably, it means that uh, you've made a poor choice. Yeah. So you need to step out, you need to reboot, and you start all over again. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 you know, and, and we have said, if this relationship is not working, then the, our culture just encourages us, step out. You do what feels good to you. Experience, you know, it's like, taste the feeling. Yeah. I mean, this is not what we're told. It's like, experience the moment. It's yeah. like, what works for you, that's what you want to engage in. That's what you want to engage yeah. in, yeah. And you want to avoid anything that makes you unhappy, and you look for that person who will make you happy. Wow. And, wow. And, the, and the amazing thing is that if you talk to people who have been married for 20 or more years, and, you know, who are still in love, if you ask them that approach, they will tell you it does not work. It simply does not work. Yeah. Every good marriage takes a lot of work. It requires a lot of patience. And much as I hate to admit this, you, it also has to endure a lot of pain. Wow. I mean, I don't think, you know, we are comfortable with the idea that a marriage needs to endure a lot of pain. But the reality is that um, uh, uh, in, in, in our culture, in, in, in that the experience, just the things we've talked about, our experience, our hunger, and our culture actively work against our ability to stay in love. Wow. You know? Anybody depressed yet? <laughs> yeah? Seriously, I mean, this, it's depressing stuff when you give it some thought, huh? Yeah. I mean, our experience, our, cult, our hunger, our culture, the culture, they work against us. And so even though people come into this thing thinking, I can... And you know, the, the weirdest thing is even having had everything that Pastor Carol has said, chances are that person sitting next to you is already thinking in their minds, this a- applies to other people. Yes. But for me, I'm special. Yes. Why, why is it, by the way? Because isn't that true? I mean, we all feel, you know what, it applies to people, but for me, I think my, mine will be different. Yes. Why is it that we're like that? You know what, I, I feel you guys, because even us, when our pastor who was taking us for counseling told us the same thing, we looked at him with pity, and so we know there are some of you who are looking at us with pity. <laughs> Saying, you, you poor guys, us guys will be different. We'll be different. Yeah. But you see, I think in each one of us, we long for something more. We long very deeply for something more. And I think it's because of the way God created us. That's yeah. what he created us that way. That's what it means for us to be created in his image. We long for relationships. We don't want, just want to be in a relationship. We don't want to just survive the years. We want to be truly, madly, and deeply in love, even when the odds are completely against us. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's so depressing, but this is a depressing world that Jesus came into. Yeah. And into such a, a hopeless situation for human beings, he began to speak. And he began to teach us about love. And we want to go into God's word today because we believe the only source, the only hope for you to actually stay in love the whole of your life, deeply in love, like Carol has said, 
is really in God's word. And so Jesus was teaching his friends. We want to read John chapter 13. And if you've got your Bible with, with you, just stand there. We're going to put it up on the screens if we can. But in addition to that, we always ask you, have your Bible with you. You've got it in your phone if you have it. Uh, there's some good downloads. You can download free Bibles that are great. And it's just a way for you to follow along. Maybe uh, you can take some notes. And later on, it gives you a chance to, f- to think about it, uh, even as you reflect on what we're teaching. But John chapter 13, and it's a very simple reading, just two verses. John 13, verse 4 and 5. And maybe, but, Kari, you could read it for us. 34 and 35. 34 and 35, yeah. yeah. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Maybe we can pray before we dig into this. Father, thank you so much that we have an opportunity to dig into your word together as a congregation, as our friend, as friends. We pray that, Lord, as we read your word, you would speak to our hearts. You would minister to us. I pray for everyone here. I know we're coming from different spaces, some deeply in love, others deeply disillusioned by this whole concept of love. And I pray that, Lord, for every single one of us, you would speak and you would teach and you would help and you would encourage. And I pray that, Lord, you would leave none of us behind. This month, I pray that, Lord, you would completely revolutionize our way of thinking and make us more like Jesus. We love you, Lord. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So the first phrase, just, just read that, that phrase again for us. Yeah. A new command I give you. New command. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Jesus sounds like he's saying, if you, on the face of it, it actually sounds like Jesus is saying, you've got 10 commandments. That's not enough. You've got 700 other laws, Old Testament laws, to support the Ten Commandments. That's not enough. Let me give you another command. I see if everything you have is not enough. That's what it sounds like he's saying. But that's not what he's saying. You know, this word that is used for new, the Greek word for new, could also mean several things. It could mean remarkable or extraordinary. Or it could mean something hidden, something that has not yet been discovered or is about to be discovered. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean new as in something that is a completely new thing. Because when you read a little later, you'll find what Jesus is about to say is not something new at all. It's something that is said over and over in the Old Testament. Oh, okay. So it's like he's saying, I'm about to give you a remarkable command. Something really, I'm about yeah. to tell you something extraordinary. Or maybe he's saying, I'm about to teach you a command that is, you'd think it's hidden. Because so few are applying it. It's, it's, it's something that is completely hidden to many. Just the understanding of how powerful this command is. And so here's the thing. Just read for us what that command is. Okay. A new command I give you, love one another. Love one another. Yeah. You know, you know what? I'm thinking there's someone over here who's saying, you know what? That sounds so basic. So Christian. Yeah, so, so Christian, so basic. How would we, if we are married or even planning to be married, how is it that we are not already loving each other? Absolutely. You know, it does sound basic. Huh? Yeah. But listen to what Jesus is saying, because Jesus is saying something very radical, and it's easy to miss it because that command sounds so simple. Jesus is saying, he takes a word that is normally used as a noun, and he uses it as a verb. So he changes the meaning of that word. So those of you who went to school and did English, what's a noun? A person, place, thing. A person, place, or thing, thing, isn't it? Yeah. My goodness, you guys are so smart. You, can you how long ago in school? I thought you'd have forgotten. <laughs> What's a verb? A doing word, isn't yeah. it? So Jesus, this word love, it's usually used as a noun. Something I feel, that's, that, that's, that's a noun. Something I fall into. What do you fall into? You fall into a swimming pool, isn't it? Yeah. That's a noun. It's a thing. So we think of love as a thing. Jesus removes that completely. And he uses the word love as a verb, as something you do. It's a doing word. So here's the thing. The command is not to be in love with the other person, but to do love to the other person, to do actions that are loving towards this other person. It's not to recapture a feeling. Some of us are in that place in our marriage where I'm not feeling this person. The feelings aren't working. Or maybe I want to break off my relationship because I don't feel about them. There's no romance. It doesn't feel the way we felt when we first met. That chemistry is gone. But you know something? Uh, Jesus is saying you do way before you feel. And how does this apply to staying in love? I think it's a very simple phrase. And this phrase, I believe, is a phrase that is going to save many marriages. In fact, here's the thing we're believing. We're trusting God that in this church, that marriages are going to be, are going to be completely transformed this month. 
because of God's word. We're believing that there's some marriages here that are simply tolerating each other, that at the end of this month, there'll be a spark and new love will be in your home because of God's word. Somebody needs to say amen right now. Right. And say it on behalf of your neighbor because they don't believe it. Somebody needs to say amen for their neighbor. Right. This is what we're trusting God for. Yeah. So here's what Jesus is saying. And this is very, you need to, if I note this down, if you're taking notes. If you want to stay in love, then focus on being loving, not on being in love. Can I say that again? If you want to stay in love, then focus on being loving, not on being in love. You know what, that, to be very honest, um, this sounds very difficult. Because if you remember, our experience, our hunger, and our culture teach us today to focus on being in love. So what you're really saying is so countercultural. Yeah, it, it, it really it is. Absolutely is. And you know, it's not just countercultural for us today. It was countercultural in Jesus' day. Yeah. And that's why he, he, gave, he had to give his friends a new model. Their culture, their experience, their hunger was not going to help them. And so he had to give them a completely new model. Just read for us what verse 35 says. Okay. It says, uh, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, don't take your cues from culture because culture won't teach you to love. Don't take your cues from your experience. Your parents will not teach you how to do this thing well. Even if you're good parents, there are things that they did not understand about this. Don't even take your cue from your hunger that is inside because what our culture sometimes tells us is if it feels good, whatever you feel, that's legitimate. And you know what the Bible tells us? The Bible tells us the heart is deceitful above all things. So don't even trust your own heart. The heart is not so smart. Some smart person said that a long time ago. He said, what does Jesus say? He says, look at me. Take the cue from Jesus himself. As I have loved you, that's how you're supposed to love your significant other. That's how you're supposed to love your spouse. How did Jesus love? Jesus made a conscious decision to give up his own life so that the person he loved would live. That's the radical love that Jesus is calling us to. And he doesn't say, and you stop somebody saying, you know what, he was Jesus. <laughs> Jesus could do that. But what does Jesus say? He says, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. This is not, he doesn't say you could or you should or you might. He says you must. This is a command from Jesus. The same way I've loved you, it's a model. You must love one another. So don't wait for them to acknowledge that they were wrong. Don't wait for them to apologize. Don't wait for them to reciprocate. Treat them as if they deserve to be treated well. Treat them as if they deserve for you to die for them. Treat them in that way because that's why Jesus treated you. By the way, let me give you a little clue just in case you didn't know. Jesus didn't die for you because you're so hot. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that, by the way? He didn't die for you because you he said, whoa, 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 that person is so fine. <laughs> that's not why he died for you because the Bible says, while we were still sinners... While we're still a mess, Jesus gave up his life for us. That's what he wants us to do. Okay. Okay. Um, can, I, can I just ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Or can I just reflect on some of the things that you're saying? Um, I'm so sure there's a woman here in this congregation who's asking herself and saying to herself right now, yeah. does Jesus know the man I am living with? <laughs> Does Jesus know how he talks to me? Yeah, how he yeah, treats me? Yeah, how even yeah. he treats our, my, our children? Yep. Um, Does Jesus know this? And But then Jesus was single. Maybe that is why he can, you know, say the things that he did. He's not living with the man I'm living with. Wow. Now, I mean, if you're thinking this, I feel you, by the way. Uh, it's true. I mean, those, those are serious concerns you have. But again... Notice, it's very easy for you to put those two things again together. It's putting the noun and seeing love as the noun. I'm not feeling this person as opposed to the verb. Jesus is not concerned about the noun. He's concerned with the verb. Jesus would ask you, are you, when was the last time you loved this person? Are you loving them? Not are you in love with them? Because being in love comes and goes. We've been in love. And there are times if you ask us, are you in love? We'll be like, yeah, we love each other. <laughs> Because you know loving each other is different from being in love. But Jesus will ask you, when was the last time you loved this person? Because feelings come only after the choice. In the early part of your relationships, the feelings are what drive the choices. But you know what? For a real relationship in life, it's the choices that drive the feelings. You make the choice, and you make the choice, and you make the choice. And the feeling will come. 
it follows after the choice. In other words, if you want to stay in love, focus on being loving, not on being in love. Now, it's very interesting because we have a little, I have a little story about that. Uh, for those of you who've done or, uh, the 10 week experience, the marriage experience that we wrote, um, you, you probably know this story. Early on in our marriage, I mean, things were not going well. Uh, about five years in, we were having a crisis, we we're having difficult conversations, things were not just going well. And I remember at that point, we really had doubts and concerns and didn't know what to do. And then some wise person taught us this thing. Treat the other person as if they deserve to be loved. Act as if you're in love. How would you act towards them if you were in love with them? Act that way. And so I made a decision at that point. Honestly, I was not feeling it. Feelings were not in the picture. But I made a commitment that every morning when I got up, whether I felt it or not, whether we had had an argument the next, the day before, actually pastors don't have arguments, it's heated, 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 uh, conversation. heated conversation the yeah. day before. Yeah. Uh, whether we, whether we, whatever I was thinking about her that morning, I made a commitment that I would wake up, I would give her a hug, I'd give her a kiss, and I'd tell her, I love you, whether I felt it or not. In fact, things got so bad, I put a reminder because I'd kept, keep forgetting. <laughs> My reminder when I woke up was, have you kissed Kara yet? I mean, it was, it was like that. So I'd, I'd wake up, I'd give her a hug, I'd give her a kiss and tell her, I love you. Now, I know some of you are thinking, Ay, that is so scheduled, that is so unromantic, that is, you know, especially that I'm sure some of the young ladies are like, my gosh, I hope my guy never has to put a, an alarm that says, you know. But here's the thing, you're not understanding, this is a psychological conditioning. I'm putting the conditioning in my mind. And what happens when I begin to act? And here's what happened in our marriage. When we began to act this way, yeah. I found something called the law of positive reinforcement. Yeah. That even though she wasn't feeling me, just that act of love in the morning, yeah. she smiled a little differently at me. Yeah. And when I went downstairs, the egg just tasted that much nicer. <laughs> and there was a positive reinforcement, and it made me remember to send the text. And she did something else. And you know what happened? Slowly, it took a while. But slowly, we began to find that that lack of feeling actually began to be addressed. Yeah. But it was still a choice. And you know what? I wrote, I, I said that was five years ago. Uh, f sorry, five, many years ago. We were five years old in our marriage. Uh, Fifteen years ago, actually. I still do it today. Yeah. And today, I don't have to put an alarm. I remember to do it without, without an alarm. Yeah. But you know, if I had not made the choice at that point, I don't know if we'd have a marriage yeah. worth talking about today. Yeah. And I think what I really appreciate about that till today is that uh, just by that act of continuously affirming your love, even when you're doing other things that I might not really consider loving, there's always that constant reminder, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. And I saw that uh, positive reinforcement, you know, happens. Uh, but when we were studying this, uh, this scripture, the yeah. last part really, you know, caught my attention. And this one, you know, Jesus here says, uh, by this, all men will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. I mean, that's a very strong or very radical challenge. It's so powerful because I think Jesus at this point is saying, okay, I know there are Christians who are going to give pushback to this. There are some people who are saying, you don't know my husband, you don't know my wife. And Jesus says, hold on a minute. I need to make, I need to make this perfectly clear what I'm saying. What proves that you're a Christian? What proves you're a follower of Jesus? Is not how much you tithe. It's not how much you pray. It's not how much you attend church. Jesus says, this is the true mark of a follower of Jesus. How you love that person who does not deserve to be loved. That's what proves that you actually love me. You know, it's easy to come and say, I love Jesus. He's been so good to me. He died 2,000 years ago. You know, he's not there for me to have interaction with in the same way as my husband. And Jesus says, how will you say you love God if you don't love your neighbor who is next to you? And so this is something very powerful that Jesus is saying. Every single day, making a choice to act loving towards this person, even if at that point I'm not feeling in love. Oh, okay, so what you're saying uh, is that the secret to staying in love is, um, you know, is this thing, it's being in love, it's doing loving it's doing deeds. Loving things. Doing loving deeds on a daily basis. Absolutely, and this, yeah. is, not, this is how love is maintained. In yeah. fact, let me put it this way. Love is not just maintained when you choose to make this your commitment. Love actually grows. And, and, and here's the thing, you know, it's so amazing. I tell you, five, year, five years into our marriage, we, this was so hard. We almost gave up. And I think we'd have, we'd have stayed together because of religious reasons. Yeah. Because pastors don't divorce. What will people say? We, who will refund the cows? 
I mean, <laughs> we have so many things that we've invested together. I mean, there are all the reasons we could have stayed together. That would have been a horrible reason to stay together. But here's the thing that has happened because of making that commitment to just love even when you don't feel loving at that point. I love this woman more than anything. Actually, the day we got married, I thought I really loved her. Today, I know that I can't live without her. I love her very much. And not only do I love her, in fact, don't even don't clap, because here's the thing, I'm not even saying this in a romantic way. You know, when I was getting married, I said it romantically, I love you. That was just feeling. When I say I love her now, it's, it's, it's tangible. And one, in fact, the thing I look forward to, because I, I know that as we continue doing this, our marriage is growing. I look forward to in 22 years to come, because we are just 22 years in our marriage right now. 22 years to come and beyond. A time when we'll be exchanging glasses. And even dentures. You know how people exchange teeth? It's like, oh. I mean, so in love in our 90s. I, I look forward to that. If the Lord should allow us to that, I look forward to staying in love the rest of our lives. And I believe with Jesus, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Yes. Yeah. 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 I um, look forward. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be sweet. Yeah. And it's very sweet every day. So, so here's the thing, guys. It gets better. It gets better. Yeah. Somebody here is about to give up on their marriage. In fact, somebody already gave up. And what we're saying is, listen, don't. You're going to leave that person. You're going to find another person. And you're going to find the formula remains the same. Yeah. It doesn't change. It's still going to have to be acting loving, not being in love. That's what's going to keep you together. If you want to stay in love, focus on being loving not on being in love. Now, there's somebody here who's thinking, what does that even mean? How do I even start? And I want to say this. We're actually going to be talking about this. That's what this series is about. We're going to break this down very tangibly over the next few weeks. So please invite, invite someone who needs to hear this. Some of you have relatives who are breaking up in their marriage. Some of you have got brothers and sisters who've given up on even marriage. They're single, but, and they've given up. They say, I'll never get married because of the things that happened to them. And I believe that God has something for every single one of us as we go through this experience together. But yeah, are you gonna say something? No. Yeah. You know, we want to land the plane. We need to conclude our time. And here's what we want to say. We want to challenge you to three things this month. It's gonna be a great month. Tell your neighbor, this is gonna be a fantastic month. It's, it's gonna be an incredible month because God's word has some powerful things. They're simple, they're not easy, but they're simple. And when we apply them, I tell you, there's gonna be a quality of relationships in this, in this church that will be unique and different because we're living according to this very uncommon, this hidden command in God's word. So three things we want to challenge you to do. Number one, number one, we want every single person in church to do this. Do the 15 day love stays challenge. So we're gonna do a, a love stays challenge. It's gonna be 15 days. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient, love is kind. You've heard it in many weddings. We're actually going to do that scripture, not just feel it. We're going to do it with each other. And here's what we're going to do. Five days a week, we're going to give you two days off. Is that okay? It's a bit exhausting. So you get a weekend off. You can pick whichever five days you're going to do this. But there's going to be a challenge every day. And it's a simple love challenge. And we want you to apply it. For those of you who are married, we want you to apply this to your partner. Even if Right now, you're not even staying in the same house. We want you to apply it to them. If you're in a place where, even if you're the place where you're even signing, you're waiting for your lawyers to finalize, that's okay as well. We just want to tell you this. Listen, you've tried everything you can on your own strength. What will you lose by giving God a chance? 15 days, it won't cost you anything. And so for 15 days, we want to challenge every single one of us, if you're married, to do this with your partner. What about if you're single? Uh-huh. It's completely relevant to you as well. Let me tell you something. You will not just find Idris Elba, fall in love, and you'll stay in love the rest of your life. This thing takes work. And when do you begin to learn how to give the work? Now. So here's my challenge to you if you're single, that you will find somebody who is hard to love. So if you're dating, it can't be the person you're dating, because this stuff doesn't work when you're dating. Uh, love is leading everything. Uh, relationship, I mean, romances and feelings are leading right now. So forget the person you're dating. Find your roommate. Find your boss. Apply it to your brother, that one you never talk to. Or your parents who you're disappointed in. Somebody who God has put in your life that is difficult to love. 
and practice the 15-day love challenge. And it's going to be on our website. I think it already is by now. Uh, it's going to be on our social media page, the, the challenge for this week. And it's every day. Just don't do next, the next day's challenge. Just do that day's challenge. And every one of us is going to be doing it. We're going to have a, a hashtag, love stays challenge. And so if you're going through it and something happens, blog about it, put it on your Facebook or your Twitter. Love stays challenge is going to be a hashtag as we go through this, uh, this, next, this next month with our challenge. So every one of us going through the love stays challenge. Now, number two, the second thing that we want you to do is to have this love conversation. In our small groups, uh, for our visitors, we, have, we call them our life groups. Uh, they meet in different homes. And we want all our life groups to just go through the conversation uh, every week. We're going to be sending you the questions, uh, some questions to discuss. If your life group has not been receiving questions yet, please go to the info table and let us know and put your email down so we can be sending those to you. Uh, but every week, we want to have the conversation. Now, some of you, the last thing you want to talk about is love. Because of things that have happened in your life, things that have happened in the mess that, are, that, that you've experienced, and you don't want to have this conversation. But let me say this. You know a lot that can be a blessing to other people. You know a lot about even what not to do in relationships. And there's somebody in your group who is just heading towards the same cliff that you fell off. You have something that could be a blessing to somebody else. So don't stay away from the conversation. Don't skive the group because you feel this is not the conversation I feel comfortable with. Some of you are single. And maybe you're feeling, you know what, this stuff doesn't apply to me because, you know what, it'll, it'll, it'll apply when I'm married. But this is when you have those conversations. This is when you begin to have real conversations and begin to, to, to form friendships in the life group that will be able to hold you accountable. When you find that Mr. Right or Miss Right, if that ever happens, we'll be able to challenge you and be able to say, hey, are you doing the things we learned together? But in addition to that, it's a great time for you to find, to connect with others. People who've had great relationships that are different from yourself. One of the things we're trusting God for is not just healing of marriages, but healing of broken hearts in this congregation. We're trusting God over this next month that some hearts that have been completely scarred and broken from a very long time ago, God is going to do some amazing, miraculous healing in this church in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. The third thing we want you to do, so, but, so, so have the love conversation. The last thing we want you to do is this end of this month, we're going to have a recommitment service. And we're going to give every married couple a chance to say their wedding vows to each other one more time. Now, somebody said amen. They're married two, two months. That's fine. But even the ones who didn't say amen, you will get a chance to say these vows to each other. And here's the thing. Some of you are going to be in a very, you're in a very difficult place right now. It doesn't sound like it's going to be possible. We're trusting Jesus for some miracles. I told you, you don't even have faith for your marriage. I have it for you. You're not even praying for it. I'm praying for you. We're praying for you. And so, here's something I want to just prophesy right now. There's somebody who's here because their spouse would not even come to church with you. And I'm prophesying. By the end of this month, they will be sitting next to you and you'll be saying those vows to each other in Jesus' name. I'm trusting God. Hey, here's the thing. You might not even believe this, but trust me. God is going to do this. There is a divorced couple in this church who will say their vows together at the end of this month. Because of what God is going to do. You divorced, you even left each other. But God is going to bring you back together. Because God is still interested in that marriage and the covenant you made with him. So don't give up on God because he will not give up on you. So hey, who's excited about this coming month? This is going to be a fantastic, fantastic month. Oh, one other thing we're going to do. If you are staying together, you've never had a, you've never said your vows, you've never had God bless your marriage. Maybe because weddings are expensive, you never, you, all, the, all that stuff. By the way, at the end of this month, we'll even do a wedding for you in the service. How's that? For free. You don't even have to buy a wedding dress if you don't plan to, but we can even help you with that. Is that okay? Hey, come on, somebody should be clapping for somebody right now. So if you have a brother who's living with his girlfriend and needs a wedding, they just need a place to get married, end of this month, Mavuno Church will be doing the wedding. So if you're here, in fact, the only condition I'll give for you is you commit to Dundor after that. And so we're not even going to make you do it before. So if you're interested in that and you're here, please sign up. Pastor Milton has a sign-up uh, sheet. We want to know how many people we're marrying at the end of this month. If you have a brother, sign them up. And then tell them, I signed you up for a wedding. Uh, your wedding day is next Sunday, the last Sunday of this month. Show up! That's all you need to do with your bride, and we'll marry you in Jesus' name. That's what we're going to be doing this month. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so we want to pray. We want to, we want to conclude in prayer. Uh, Here's what we want to do. We want to pray today. And as we begin, I just sense God wants to lay a foundation here. 
And I sense that we need to pray, and I'm going to invite my wife to pray, for somebody who's had a broken heart. Uh, there are some of you who have had breakups upon breakups, or you've been betrayed in relationships, and because of that, you've just found it very hard to trust. And we're not even asking you to do anything today, not even to exercise any faith. We will exercise it on your behalf. And we want to pray for you for healing. Not even for relationships. We want to pray for healing. Because we know that when God heals you, whether you end up married or not, you will be in a place where you can be the fearless influencer God called you to be. There are some things in your relational life that are keeping you from being that person God called you to be. So we want to help you with that. And so if you're here, you've had that just a broken mess. It might even be your own parents' relationship. Some of you have that co commitment phobia that Pastor Carol was talking about. You're terrorized. Anytime you get too close to somebody, you feel terrified in relationship. And we believe that the devil has planned to frustrate the relationships in your family. But you know what? Not as long as Jesus is alive. We're saying today there is healing in the house. And also we want to pray for anybody who, who's here who's in a place where it's a difficult space in your marriage. Maybe your spouse is not even in church today because of that. Or maybe they're sitting next to you and you need to just tap each other and just say, you know what, let's just be real with this one. We need all the help we can get. And if you're here, we're going to invite you to stand up to your feet as well. So anybody who's in those groups, stand to your feet because we want to pray for you. Just stand to your feet. You know, at that place where I just need Jesus to heal my broken heart. We're in God's presence. We don't have to be shy about that. Come on, stand wherever you are. Let's appreciate them as they stand. We bless God for every single one of you. And we're trusting God. We're trusting God. Hey, as you're standing in faith in God's house, we're saying that God has power. Yeah. We're not here worshiping an idea. We're not here singing to a God that doesn't exist. We're saying if the name of Jesus is the name that is above every other name, yeah. God is able to do it. And we're trusting God for your healing. Come on, just put out your hands like this. Yeah. Asking, saying, God, I need your healing. Yeah. I think one of the things that I've realized is that the enemy normally uses very stinging words. When we talk about a broken heart, usually it is words that have stung us, that have wounded us, that have broken us. Sometimes it's even actions that have really just made us feel so bad, uh, so torn within. One of the things that the Lord has taught me is that we are able to pull out those daggers. That's what the enemy has simply done. If, it, if you're here and it is words that were spoken over you that have wounded you, all we need to do is to pull them out to pull them out of your heart and believe you me you will walk out of here with a new heart mm. with a healed heart father we thank you we thank you jehovah god that you're in the business of healing people you're in the business of restoring our heart you're in the business of restoring us as people we thank you that by your death you came to redeem us and to give us a new life and new hope and so even for these people who are saying i have a broken heart maybe there were words that were spoken or even actions that were very painful father we begin to remove those arrows that the enemy put in our heart we begin to remove those arrows that the enemy put in our spirit Father, we remove these arrows. I'd like you to just name them. Name those times. Name those words. Name those time, uh, opportunities that happened. Just begin to name them and to give them up before God. And to even cancel them in Jesus' name. Father, we cancel these words. We cancel all these uh, times that we were wounded. We pull these out of our spirit in the name of Jesus. Oh, we pull them out. All they simply are, are arrows, flaming darts that the enemy throws to us that cause us such deep pain. So we pull them out of our heart. We pull them out of our spirit in the name of Jesus. We bind them and we cast them away to the place where Christ is repairing for all evil spirits. And Lord, over our lives, we, begin, we pray that you begin to do a new work in our lives. Even in this month, we are praying and trusting that even as we walk out today, even today, beginning today, and even this week we will be different people we will know that we have met with the living God we know that we'll have met with the God who delivers us and who's able to heal us completely even from emotional wounds so we thank you Jehovah God for this opportunity to pray and to come before you just as we are for we pray these things in Jesus name Amen let's give another big hand he's such a good God he's such a good father you know it's such an amazing thing because God is able He's able. And I know that, as I just think about it, it's amazing. There's nothing the world has 
that will help you to stay in love. There's nothing the world has. But God has everything every one of us needs. Everything. And he will help us. We want to conclude. I want to give an opportunity. Maybe there's somebody who's here before I conclude who's saying, you know what, I just am not connected to my father. And as you've, pre as you've preached, and maybe it's not even today, maybe a message was shared before, and you just at the place where you're saying, I'd like to give my life to Jesus. Maybe because you've realized this thing cannot be done by my own strength. I need God in my life. And here's the thing I've come to realize. We've come to realize in our own marriage. When we fail, God never fails. His love never gives up on us. And it's because we invite him into our marriage. We invited him into our marriage that he's able to help us when we fail. And maybe you're here, you've been trying to do your relationships by yourself in your own strength. And maybe you've come to that place where you're saying, I need God's help. I need God's assistance to do this. And we'd love for you to have an opportunity today to give your life to that God, to invite him in, to dare him, to say, God, if you exist, help me because I've, been, I've made a mess of it myself and I cannot do this unless you help me. But here's the amazing thing. He exists and he's able to do this. So if you have, I'm just going to ask you to put up your hand and then put it down again because we'd love to pray for you. Just raise it up real high, bold. And then put it down again. You're saying, Pastor, pray for me. Because today I want to give my life to this God who is able to save. To this God who is able to heal a broken heart. To this God who is able to help me find and stay in love with somebody like that. Come on, just raise your hand wherever you are. We want to bless God with you and just pray. Anybody who's here, I just sense that I need, I wasn't planning to do this. But something just told me I need to just pause for a minute and give anybody an opportunity. There's somebody who came. Maybe you're thinking about your neighbor right now. And maybe you're feeling embarrassed, but it's not about them. It never was. It's about you and this God who leads you into purpose. So if you're wherever you are, just raise your hand. I want to see it, and I'll pray for you. Anybody who's here would love to do this. No pressure, but if you're here and you'd like to say, Pastor M, Pastor Carol, pray for me. I see you, my sister. I bless God for you. I'm so glad I gave that opportunity. I bless God for you. Anybody who would like to join us? Anybody who would like to do that? I wasn't planning to do this like I said, but I just sense there's somebody who should, go, should not go home today without making this commitment. Bless the Lord. Come on, let's appreciate her one more time. To God be the glory. We thank God for you, my sister. And here's, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. That's all I'm going to do. And then we're going to conclude. And for those of you who've made that prayer, I want you to pray. By the way, I love praying this prayer again because it reminds me, it's like saying my vows to my wife again. It's like recommitting myself to Jesus. Every time I pray this prayer, it's I remember what I prayed and I remember what I live for. So if you've ever prayed this prayer, I'm going to ask you to join my sister, as we say this prayer with her. My sister, would you just stand up wherever you are? Just stand up where you're sitting. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Don't be shy. Just stand wherever you are. Is that okay? Okay, you're not able to stand. That's fine. That's fine. Let's, let's just pray. Let's close our eyes and bring her before the Lord. And I'm going to invite you to say these words. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Come on, say them with her. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. From this day forward. From this day forward. I choose to follow you. I choose to follow you. Forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Of my sins. I choose to live for you. I choose to live for Come into my life. Come into my life. And lead me. And lead me into the relationships. Into the relationships that you want for me. That you want for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's appreciate that sister. To God be the glory. Wow. Wow. I didn't even plan to make that call, but I'm so glad I did. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. Tell your neighbor, I'm so glad you're here. It's great to be part of God's family. Come on, stand to your feet. We want to conclude. We want to bless you as you go out into this week. Yeah. There's this song we sing that says, Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out of me. Can we sing that once? Yeah, yeah it's a blessing, isn't it? Your love never fails. Where are the singers? They should be singing this with me. All right, I'm going to try and lead. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out of me. we come before you right now declaring those words as real words as ultimate reality that when everybody else around us fails when people betray that your love never fails it never gives up it never runs out on us and lord as we go into this week i pray that every one of us would take this blessing with them 
that Lord, it doesn't matter what happens in the week. It doesn't matter what happens in the house this week. The one thing that remains is God's love for me never, never, never runs out and he never gives up on me. You're the God who loves us. You're the God who stays in love with his children forever and ever. And so God's people, I bless you. As you go out into this week, celebrate God's love. May you have such an encounter and experience of his love. May you know that you are loved. May you walk with such authority that people would look at you and find somebody who's so different from the rest of the world because you're not looking for the world to affirm you. You know you are loved. I bless you now and we bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and God's people say it together. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand in Jesus' name.